You missed the clap, didn't you? It's been a while. I know. What's up, Internet? Mega my boy. Good evening, sports fans. Crobat for the win of the Token Minorities here today with week one of the PCL against Serene Grace, aka Sarah, coach of the Chicago Shaman Sky. This game is super important. We want to get off on the right foot. Why does no one ever want to get off on the left foot? Seriously. Anyway, if we make playoffs, the commissioner promised me a used karaoke machine. I need this karaoke machine. I got nothing else to live for. Nothing. Just adding to that list of prizes, we will also get a Bob Ross waffle maker if we become world champion by winning this league. It's holy, it's coveted, everyone wants it, and it's gonna be mine. Shoot, let's get crazy. Alright, let's talk real quick about the Mons that were brought to this game. So you guys recall from the quick team builder I had up yesterday, we got a Terrakion, we got Mega Blastoise, we got Excadrill, we've got Alolan Muck, we've got Crafagrius, and we've got Darmanitan. So my opponent, most importantly, she has brought Gigalith, Rotomwas, Shaman, Mamoswine, Mega Sableye, and Hitmonchan. What in tarnation? There's a Hitmonchan on my screen? The memes just write themselves, folks. Alright. Otherwise, though, there are some big threats on my screen for sure. So, Rotom Wash and Mamoswine form a fantastic core against this team. I mean, Rotom Wash just hits so much super effectively, as you can see. And Mamoswine hits like a truck. Uh, beyond that, I'm not too afraid of what I see here. I, f I feel pretty decent about this game. I really do. Buckle your seatbelt, fasten your helmets, wrap yourselves in bubble wrap guys and gals because we are jumping into this match full speed ahead. Let's get started. Alright, couple things while it's loading. First, I want to apologize if I use the wrong pronoun during this. Obviously Sarah's a girl. If I say he, it's a force of habit. I'm going to try to say she though. And I'm going to lead with Terrakion. Pretty important because I think it's a good way to just get rocks up right away in this game if I can. Unfortunately, she decides to lead with Gigalith, so that's not the best strategy and kind of forces me to try to finagle around with this thing. I'm going to try to set up a sub and hope that maybe she just goes for stealth rocks right off the bat. And if she does that, I basically get a free close combat off. Uh, I also fear this thing could be Choppleberry. Uh, I just, I've seen these things run Chopple, I've seen them run Shooka, I've seen them run a lot of different interesting items. I'm just going to go into my physical wall. Keegan, Pythagoras here, does nothing with the Earthquake. Literally nothing. It was the right call to switch out for sure. I miss a Will-O-Wisp as she hits a Toxic. That's really bad, but I do carry the rest with a Chesto Berry. So that helps. That definitely helps if I want to get rid of that Toxic later. She's going to go into Shaman now. Not unexpected. It deals with... Cofagrius pretty darn well, takes a will o wisp bolt, has natural cure, a lot of the elements I'm sure she was looking for in dealing with this thing, especially because it's a physical wall. Now I gotta go into my special wall, which is the pile of sludge, aka a lowland muck. We've got seed flare tanking abilities like it's nobody's business. I'm thinking like an army tank versus an ant, okay? That that's what that was like there. That's what that was like. Obviously Shaman's leaving the building. It's just gone. Gone, gone. Knockoff does a good amount to that Gigalith, and I confirmed it has Chockleberry. Uh, that's why I made the right turn, uh, plays turn one, for sure. But now, it might be in range where close combat KOs if that comes to it. So she starts to set up curses with Gigalith. That's pretty impressive. I, I think that's pretty cool. Remember, though, I have the Grass Knot on this thing. So, I could go for it if I want. I could. I try to rest there because you know what? I wanted to get back to full health, get the toxic away. I wanted no chance that after a Grass Knot not KOing, that I didn't want Gigalith to KO me the next turn. That would have been really bad. I could just go into Muck again. This Shaman is walled into next year, even if she predicts with the Earth Power, which she does right here. How much damage does that do? Probably like the same amount as Seed Flare. That's, that's so sad. It's a Life Orb Shaman too. Oh my gosh, I just feel so terrible. Here's the... <clears throat> Here's a Sableye. Mega Sableye. Knock off from a Muck. Not boosted, because it doesn't knock off an item. Does about half. I'm gonna go into my Mega Blastoise here, because I want to take a Will-O-Wisp if she decides to go for it. I want to take a Knock off if she decides to go for it. She recovers. It's not the end of the world. Okay, I can live with this. It means I can Mega Evolve. I can get a Scald off. I want to try to burn this thing. I want 
her to not be able to get any calm minds up and if I just keep up scald pressure I don't think it's reasonably gonna be able to happen because look that that does about half all I need is to get a burn she goes for shadow ball that's fine my mega blastoise is extremely bulky this week and I tank that really well then I snag a crit woohoo yes all right so we got our first KO of the game right there and shaman comes back in not unexpected once again we get the free ticket to Alolan muck train here it is rolling steam right over the shaman of course Eat flare misses because we're dealing with an Alolan muck Alolan muck is a god Pokemon it's a god Pokemon I go for another knockoff and then get the poison touch on the incoming Gigalith. Can you believe this, folks? That I should just enter the lottery right now. I, I could probably retire with the amount of luck I've been having with the critical hit and the poison touch. Muck is just acing the whole mon right now. All right, I'm gonna go back out into my Fagrigus. I do not want to take an earthquake from the Gigalith. Not today. I get to go for the Grass Knot, though, and take it out. We're up six to four, so this game is going really well so far. The Shaman coming back in. Things I expected for a thousand Alex. Gonna go back into Muck. Muck's still in pretty good shape. C Flare is gonna do nothing. I'm just hoping for no special defense drop. I think even if she got a special defense drop here, I still live in Earth Power anyway. Just look how little that does. I'm just in amazement. I go for the knockoff because I feel like I could just get rid of its life orb. If, he swi if she switches, not a big deal. Knock something else off. Now it's in Shadow Sneak range. Now anything can KO it from there. I try to go for the Shadow Sneak, and then you would you believe it? We get the Poison Touch on Mammo Swine. That is unbelievable. Muck is just goading this game out, is being literally the goat. Watch out, Tom Brady. All right. She does set up the Stealth Rocks, which is super annoying for me. I, I tried to just go for a Latch Dish Shadow Sneak, and now she goes for the Ice Shard. Smart play to try to outspeed my Shadow Sneak. However, that Mammoth Swine is definitely on a timer, and on a big timer. I'm going to go out into my Mega Blastoise, which is at near full health. Can live any attack from this thing, because it's very bulky and has enough health. I can now Rapid Spin, and I want to get those rocks away. That is my goal. If Blastoise dies, but she does not have rocks in the field, I know she's not Scarf. So I can have to be with something else later. I just don't want rocks on the field. That would be terrible for me right now. So she goes for the Ice Shard. I, I don't know why that was. I'm going to guess maybe predicting Aqua Jet. But either way, there are no rocks on my side of the field. I'm going for Rapid Spin here. Would have been cool to get the Rapid Spin KO. She does just go for the Earthquake, though. Not a big deal. Blastoise, unfortunately, goes down. But right after, Mammo Swine goes down. So we are still up a pretty good amount in this game. Four to three with a weakened Shaman right here. The incoming Excadrill will not outspeed the Shaman, but it has the ability to KO it here. And I'm Assault Vested, so I know I can live even an Earth Power anything from this thing. It's also very specially bulky. So I'm going to go for the Earthquake. I know that it will lull it into a false sense of security, whereby the next turn... She's going to think that she can just go for an Earth Power or use some kind of move and I won't be able to two-hit KO from that range. Meanwhile, I'm going to surprise her with the Poison Jab. Look how awesome that worked out. Now, Hitmonchan is in the game. Get ready to laugh, everyone. This is going to be a screaming riot. Who cares about Hitmonchan? We got this game. Let's go to Kofag and wrap this... What? It was in this moment. Danza knew. He f***ed up. No! No, God, please, no, 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 no! You are not prepared. No! It only took her to getting to plus three, plus three, but we have finally got a Will O Wisp on this Hitmonchan running amok. I'm thinking I'm about to lose here, okay? I'm going to Darmanitan, expecting another bulk up. Now, I want to go for the Flare Blitz. The U turn into Kofag is like so obvious that I just want to get half damage, let's Flare Blitz, maybe two hit KO, it does a little less than I wanted, and she goes for the Drain Punch, breaking my heart. Uh, imagine if I went to Kofag there with the U-turn, did the obvious play, if I did that obvious play, this would have been so much better off. I, I reset myself into a bad position here, going back into Kofag, I guess the only thing that can deal with this only thing on the planet right now. I uh, know that he, uh, she is going to go for the bulk up here. I'm going to try to Grass Knot and just do damage and hope that between Burn and 
Grass Knot, it'll just be whittled down. My gosh, this Hitmonchan is trying to get to plus six, plus six. I'm a little worried. I don't know what its last move is. I really don't. It could be Ice Punch. If it's Ice Punch, we're good. We see Ice Punch, and that does like almost nothing. And we get Mummy instead of Iron Fist. So I feel pretty good about us getting this victory over the Hitmonchan, but oh my gosh, I stupidly lost arm there. I, I should have just U-turned. It would have just been so much safer. It really would have been, but Rotom Wash versus the world on an air balloon, mind you. So I have to take a Hydro Pump here. Obviously, Excadrill and Terrakion don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to go to Terrakion. I would have gone to Excadrill to just take the Hydro Pump and KO and win, but she was smart enough to bring an air balloon. And so therefore, that's not a very good idea. I'm gonna try to get a sub up on this Rotom Wash. Let's do it. Honestly, I think that's the best way because we want her to miss the Hydro Pump. She's getting pretty darn lucky with those Hydro Pumps and I just am like, I, I can't keep doing this. I'm gonna go for my Z Rock type move. I'm feeling like this can KO, honestly. It's, it's the Calc says, depending on her Rotom set, it can KO. The way she's been playing it, I kind of have an inkling it's a little more offensive. We'll see. This is going to be quite a roll to end all rolls. I see that HP going down, 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 but it is unfortunately not enough to win the game. Unbelievable. Now, we do have an Assault Vested Excadrill in the wings, and she doesn't have Air Balloon anymore. So this is still definitely winnable. She just can't get a crit. We can tank this Hydro Pump and win. And we tank it. We go for the Mold Breaker Earthquake. Win the game. 1-0. That was too close for comfort, to say the least. But you know what? It gets the job done. It gets us the dub. We are one step closer to getting that Bob Ross Waffle Maker. And you can bet we'll be going after that used karaoke machine as well. All in all, though, I think this was a hard-fought game by both teams. I'm very pleased with it, and I'm looking forward to playing my good friend Goldoa Dragon next week. I'm looking forward to a D-League rematch, a TTM match. I am ready to throw up. I am ready to throw down next week against Goldoa Dragon. I look forward to seeing y'all there.